Wolves are some of the most iconic predators in the animal kingdom. They're featured in songs, legends, and even modern films. Although the gray wolf is the most recognizable, there are more than 30 distinct subspecies that range across the northern hemisphere. These dedicated pack animals hunt together, roam together, and play together, all while maintaining an important role in their local ecosystem. Wolves are large, four-legged, carnivorous mammals. They have pointed ears, elongated snouts, and bushy tails that curl behind them as a means of expression. Although there are many different subspecies with their own unique coloring, most wolves share the same rough, thick fur with either a gray or beige pattern. In many cases, the animal's natural coloring will match the landscape that they need to blend in with. The average wolf typically weighs somewhere between 80 and 160 pounds, or 36 to 72 kilograms. Females are usually smaller than their male counterparts, often by as much as 40 pounds or 18 kilograms. Most wolves are about 4 to 6 feet long, or 1.2 to 1.8 meters, and stand roughly 2 to 3 feet high, or 60 to 90 centimeters. One of the largest wolves ever killed was killed in Alaska in 1975. He weighed an impressive total of 175 pounds, or 80 kilograms. Wolves are animals that are native to the Northern Hemisphere and can be found in Europe, Asia, and North America. They like to live in habitats with plenty of game, cover, and room to roam. However, they are not limited to any one kind of terrain. This is why you'll see wolves in Arctic tundras, mountains, forests, plains, and nearly every other kind of northern environment. Due to their large size and the thickness of their fur, most wolves prefer to live in cold climates, so you're unlikely to ever see one in the southern parts of their respective continents. The social structure of a wolf pack is one of the most fascinating that has ever been observed. They have a very strict level of hierarchy that has to be adhered to by all of the members of the pack. This may sound harsh initially, but it is a method that allows these packs of wolves to be able to survive. The leader of the pack is the alpha male, and his mate is the beta female. Many believe that the social order of a pack is determined by fear and dominance of the one in charge. However, it isn't necessarily established by an attack on one, and the winner is the leader. It is much more complex than that. Through careful research, experts have found that this type of social structure helps to promote unity and social order. It also helps to reduce conflicts and to lower the chances of aggressive behaviors occurring among the members of the pack. The upper level of social structure doesn't change very often. However, it can a little bit at the lower levels. Living in a pack not only facilitates the raising and feeding of pups, coordinated and collaborative hunting, and the defense of territory, but it also allows for the formation of many unique emotional bonds between pack members, the foundation for cooperative living. It is during a hunt when cooperation between wolves within a pack is most apparent. Wolves are opportunists. They test their prey, sensing any weakness or vulnerability through visual cues and even through hearing and scent. Contrary to ambush predators that rely on the element of surprise and a short and intense burst of energy to secure their prey, wolves are an endurance or coursing predators. They chase their prey, often over long distances, sometimes even a few miles, to find the right animal or opportunity. On the hunt, wolves work together with certain individuals typically carrying out their specific roles in the hunt, often based on age, gender, and social standing. These animals are carnivores and will eat nearly any type of prey that they can catch. With that said, they typically prey on large hoofed animals like deer, elk, moose, sheep, goats, and bison. When large prey is not available, wolves are likely to catch smaller mammals like rabbits or beavers. An adult needs to eat about 5 to 7 pounds of meat every day to maintain a healthy weight. Typically, a pack will kill a single large mammal and survive off the meat for several days before moving on to the next opportunity. The average wolf eats the equivalent of 15 deer across an entire year. This is why packs need to maintain such large territories to survive. Wolves are apex predators, which means that they are at the top of the food chain within their designated territories. 
Still, they stick together in packs for good reason. There are plenty of bigger, meaner animals who are willing to consider them as prey. In general, these animals need to watch out for bears and large cats like tigers or mountain lions. When they work together, a pack can take down a polar bear, but a wolf alone might not be so lucky. The actual biggest threat to any wolf is human interaction. They often get shot by poachers, licensed hunters, and farmers who are attempting to protect their livestock. These animals also suffer from climate change caused by deforestation. When humans move in, their territory gets smaller, reducing their prey options and making survival difficult. The human presence is often credited as the reason for the drastic decline in wolf presence across North America over the last 100 years. As you can see, wolves are great hunters and have amazing qualities, but can they cope in Australia? Australia is one of the world's most biologically diverse countries. It is home to over 1 million plant and animal species, many of which are unique to the world and only about half of them have been scientifically described. Because of its geographical isolation, Australia is very different from the rest of the world. It split from the supercontinent Gondwana 99 million years ago and has been on its own since then. That is why it has so many marsupials in comparison to the rest of the world. It was only in the Pleistocene that placental mammals were able to come over from Southeast Asia as the continent grew closer to Indonesia and then only bats and rats. The relative scarcity of native placental mammals is a unique feature of Australia's fauna. As a result, marsupials, a group of mammals that raise their young in a pouch that includes macropods, possums, and as a Euromorphs, occupy many of the ecological niches that placental mammals occupy elsewhere on the planet. Australia doesn't have a native wolf, unless you count the dingo, which are feral dogs that were most likely brought to the continent about 50,000 years ago with the first human settlers. There was a species of marsupial predator called thylacine, which sometimes is called the Tasmanian wolf or Tasmanian tiger, due to stripes on its hind quarters. These animals bore a resemblance to canines due to convergent evolution. Unfortunately, the species was declared extinct in the 1930s due to overhunting and programs to protect sheep herds in Australia. In recent years, there have been some questionable sightings that indicate a population of thylacines may have survived. But for now, science considers them to be extinct. If introduced into the mountain regions of New South Wales and Victoria, wolves would probably survive. The temperatures are more moderate and there is generally more rain than the interior. That may not be the case though with climate change. Plus, there is a huge deer population for them to feed on. In fact, deer in most states in Australia are out of control and game rules no longer apply to them. They can be shot on sight any time of the year. Apart from deer, there are feral dogs feral goats, and kangaroos. However, hunting kangaroos would not be a very easy task. Kangaroo has a type of locomotion that the canines have never seen before. They are also very fast, can travel up to 80 kilometers an hour, and have tremendous acceleration, getting there very quickly, and are probably the fastest animal over rough and rocky terrain and up hills where they can bound very easily. Nothing can match them over long distances. They can also chew on feral horses in the southern alpine regions, so there's plenty of food and enough water for them. However, introducing predators typically end up being more of a problem than a solution. Invasive species are already a serious problem in Australia. Wolves may have a harmful impact on many other native populations, especially some that are already vulnerable. Now that you've heard our opinion, we want to know yours. What do you think would happen if wolves migrated to Australia? We're waiting for your answers in the comments. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.